All right, tonight we've got a special episode of The Official. After coming back from the Elite 11, I made some some contacts with some of the, the quarterbacks that were performing there and want to get a bunch of these interviews to have everyone following along, you know, get to know these guys and, and uh, get to know what kind of players they are, what kind of people they are as we prospect um, in the, the 2024 class actually tonight. So uh, Walker White joins us from Little Rock, Arkansas. He's the a standout QB in the 2024 class. Currently the QB 11 on the 24-7 composite. Uh, I think he's had a really impressive Elite 11 uh, showing as a, as a rising junior. So we wanted to bring him on the show and discuss. This is the official. It's just me tonight, folks, um, but I do have Walker White here from Little Rock Christian Academy. Walker, how's it going? Thanks for joining us tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. It's going great. It's going great. Yeah, it looks like you kind of just got out of the training room, the practice field and all that. Now you're sitting down with us, so definitely appreciate you taking some time uh, with us. Before we get started, just want to remind everyone if you're watching this to like and subscribe, of course. That helps us with YouTube. And then visit campuscanta.com if you haven't already. We've got a lot of articles coming out, rankings, and the whole nine yards for uh, the 2022 class, 2023 class already coming in. But Walker here is from the 2024 class. So we are looking, you know, classes deep. You are a rising junior, I guess at this point, having finished your sophomore year, but um, making a name for yourself already. Now, Walker, you come from a family of athletes. Uh, from what I understand, I was looking like your dad played golf at Arkansas, brother played receiver at Arkansas, um, another brother played baseball at Arkansas, another brother is starring at, uh, I think, your rival uh, rival high school down there in Little Rock. Is that right? Pulaski or something? Yes, sir. No, he he graduated last year. Um, okay. But, yeah, we, we actually had the, the privilege of – me playing, me starting as a freshman as a receiver, and he was playing a uh, receiver as a senior in, in the state championship. We played against each other, so it was oh, fun. okay. Uh, so, are you like the youngest of, of all the whites? So, I'm the youngest of the boys. So, there's four boys, um, and I have one little sister, she's 13 years old. Um, but the boys, it goes 21, 20, 19, and then I'm 17. So, uh, we're all pretty close in age, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's like my kids are all like two and three years apart too. So, uh, if we have even one as good of an athlete as y'all are, I'll be pretty happy. But um, <laughs> so, so you've basically grown up completely immersed in in sports. I mean, I guess from the moment you could even maybe before you could walk, especially football. What's that been like for you? To feel like you've already learned. Um, you know, you're you're now going through a little bit more. You're starting to get into recruiting and all that. But I mean, your family seems like hey, we know we know this drill by now. Mm -hmm. yeah no, for, sure. for sure yeah um yeah so my um oldest brother he played uh arkansas uh football he was a receiver there um and and he had offers here and there um and he he's he's a really good player but he went to arkansas it was he was there for three years he didn't get the playing time he enjoyed or he he was hoping to get and so he transferred to uca central arkansas it's a so D1 college in Arkansas and um yeah, so he's playing receiver there. Um and so I mean, yeah, like it's this it's all kind of like the recruiting process is it's the same, but it's like real different, like quarterback wise, because you colleges can take in five receivers each year, but most colleges, I don't know about all, but most colleges, their goal is to take about one QB every year. And so for quarterbacks, it's so specific. Like they, like if you offer a quarterback and you know you want them, it's like they can't be wrong because their future and their job relies on how well this quarterback is. You know what I'm saying? So like, if let's say I commit to a college and I and I go and be a stud and I become a franchise quarterback there, I like like that quarterback that recruiter is like. 
the head coach is like, great job. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And he's like, getting a promotion. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. He's going to be go, become a head coach somewhere else. <laughs> but I mean, like the thing is, like they can't be wrong about the quarterbacks just because there's only one on the field. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And yeah. they, and like everything kind of like runs through the quarterback. Like without a quarterback, nothing runs. But I mean, that's kind of the same with like every person, position without a line, like nothing runs. But I mean, like the quarterback job it's it's real special i mean it like everyone looks to the quarterback when things are going bad and uh and the quarterback has to perform for a team to win so i mean Mm -hmm. it's definitely fun but it's it's what my parents have told me like when my brother was getting recruited as a receiver it's definitely different as a quarterback i mean that's some great insight and i can understand that you know we um as fans and um on this side of things we kind of imagine what might be going on but like yeah i mean it's it's really interesting because we know that yeah the, you know it's with all due respect to all positions the quarterback is you know like you said it is often the face of the franchise it is often the you know the team takes on the personality of two people the coach and the quarterback like for the most part and so yeah it is a huge deal and they do only take one and so you yeah i mean all that makes perfect sense so in your experience, like, has, you know, have your parents told you that or has, like, have a coaches told you that? Like, hey, you know, we, we only get one shot at this per year. Um, do they put pressure on you to, you know, commit earlier? Uh, I've, I've seen that. I've seen that, like, just kind of in my experience. Like, it seems like recruiting classes often start with the team getting a quarterback to, like, commit. And then, you know, mm-hmm. the rest of the class kind of falls into place. Um, I'm a Gator fan. So back in the day when we were rolling, you know, Tebow committed, I remember. And then, you know, all the other guys wanted to come play with Tebow back in the day. So uh, it seems like that's how it works. Have they told you anything like that? Like, have you ever, have you heard a coach mention something like, you know, we got to get you in and then, and then everything else will fall into place? Yes, sir. So many coaches have told me like, listen, man, like you, I mean, have a good idea of where you want to go by your the end of your junior season, because like once you commit, the other the tight ends, the receivers, the running backs are gonna be like, oh, I know that guy, I know he can throw the ball well, I know he can run the ball well, I know he's a cool dude, I know he's a leader, I want to go, I want to go be his receiver, I want to go be his alignment, you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, yeah. once I once a quarterback commits, other people from my class, like they they see that. And then they're like, oh, yeah, like, I I want to go there now. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. other coaches have said, like, yeah, you might want to commit a little bit earlier than some do just because it, it allows – first, it would help you and it would help the team that you're committing to because it allows other people and other athletes see who's going to be their quarterback in that class. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've had some people or some coaches say, like, yeah, you might want to – you might want to uh, be committed somewhere around the start of your season, senior season or the end of your junior, junior season. Just kind of have that idea um, for that purpose. Um, and just kind of like so other athletes will understand who's who'll be in their class. Sure. No, it makes perfect sense. Um, and it's interesting to know that, yeah, everyone's thinking the same thing. We think they're thinking it, but it's nice to know that like that is how it's happening. So, yeah. um, all right. So junior or sophomore year, last year, 2021, that from what I could tell, that was your first year as a starter. You said you were a receiver more um, as a freshman, and so and else, I guess, was was quarterback. And you took over the starting role last year, right, for the first time? Uh, what was that like uh, for you? Yeah, so as a quarterback, last year was my first varsity quarterback start. So okay, as yeah, a ninth grader – high school. Yes, sir. As a ninth grader, I played quarterback with my ninth grade team. Um, and then after that – we went up to uh, be with the varsity in the playoffs, and I was a tight end. Um, and I actually ended up ending the season being like the second leading receiver. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, so, so that that's crazy. The off, yes, sir. So the off season and the spring ball going into my sophomore year, um, I competed with a senior and. Uh, whichever whoever guy was not going to get the quarterback job was going to be the the other receiver. So either one of us were going to be on the field no matter what. Um, but I ended up getting the job, and I mean, 
for me, it was like, it was like, all right, now here we go. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, I was like, finally, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I had worked so hard for it, but it, it was like, it was kind of like a, all right, you got to turn up now. Cause my QB coach is also, has always said like, or no, my old OC, um, he would say, um, there's no age in leadership. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, mm-hmm. you, I mean, you, there's like, you have to, it doesn't matter like what age you are. If you show that you're doing the right thing and that mm-hmm. you can push other people, like it doesn't matter how cool they think they are. Like, no, like you, you like you're trying to win a football game. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter what other people think of you or your status or how popular you are. No, you're winning football games. That's your goal. And so, I mean, I've kind of like taken that in. I'm like, all right, I got to step up. And most seniors might not like me at first, but I mean, my dad always said, you got to gain their respect by success. And so I just kind of like took that, um, try to do as best of I, I, I try to do as best as I could through the season. And we ended up getting to the semifinals, um, losing to Whitehall, who we lost to during the regular season. And it was rough, but it was definitely good for me this, this year, just to get uh, another year of experience on my belt just for this next junior year. Which is, I'm really yeah. excited about this next junior year. So I, I, I'm really, I'm really pumped for this year. Yeah, yeah. I noticed. I took. I was just kind of doing some, some just quick like, like research, getting the lay of the land. I noticed that y'all, yeah, lost to Whitehall. Unfortunately, I watched a little of the Pulaski game, which that team must be quite, um, quite a well, well oiled machine. But I mean, since we're yeah, since we're talking about, they like made it did an onside kick every single freaking time. Was that driving you guys crazy? Is that something they always do, or did they just do that for that game because y'all rivals? So, most people know a lot about Plassey Academy. They they're a team for twenty for twenty plus years for about twenty one years. They've gone for every fourth down. One of those. Yeah. So they're playing Madden basically. Yeah, they've they <laughs> onside kick every kickoff. Oh, every man. kickoff it's yeah. awesome that's brutal that's brutal and, i mean yeah that's brutal mm-hmm. yeah and the previous head coach did it like there was like a study made if you get two onsides if you re- recover two onsides a game there's like a 90 percent chance you're winning the game mm. and so he okay took so, that. Is this, so is this the guy that that went and coached at presbyterian or something yes sir Okay, so I didn't realize he was at Pulaski. Okay, okay, yes, okay. I have definitely yeah, so. heard about that guy and the, yeah, yeah. the never the never punts and all that jazz. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's him. So, um, he he left last year, and they still did it. I guess they still did it just because the coach that became head coach was had been with Coach Kelly for years, and so he stuck with the system. Um, and I mean, yeah, I mean, Pulaski Academy, you would just. You can't really explain it. I mean, you just have to kind of like, you would just kind of have to watch them because it's their their offense. It's like it's hard to even like explain. But like, all right, cool. That safety's doing this, and then this, and then these three guys are gonna be open. So the quarterback, he's like, he steps. He's like, oh, he's doing that. Pop. And then like, there's no one within ten yards of him. So the offense is the offensive scheme is it's unbelievable. Yeah, and, well, they did that even at Presbyterian last year because I was following him once he got a college job, and I was like checking in on those stats, and like <laughs> those box scores were crazy, even for Presbyterian. I mean, they were throwing for like eight touchdowns a game. Um, well, yeah, even, I mean, the first yeah. game Coach Kelly ever coached at Presbyterian, they scored eighty-four points. <laughs> now that Stupid. now his season there ended up not going so great, but right. I mean, you have to like respect the offensive scheme. I mean, like there's something right there, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they've won. What was it? They've won 10 state championships at that school since coach Kelly's been there. So, I mean, he left last year and then they won again last year. Um, But I mean, yeah, for me going into that game, I mean, it's as a sophomore, it's really intimidating just because playing on that field, Playing on their field, they're the the trying to trying to like find the word, the um the experience and like the the way that stadium is, it's like it's so intimidating. Like the 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 student sections holding up posters in my face, like 
Like I'm like, bro, I'm like, they did their awesome. research. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm 16 years old, and I know the thing is, I know everyone in that student section. Everyone yeah. knows everyone at these two sure. schools. We're all good sure. friends, but once it's once it's PA Little Art Christian Week, might as well not talk to us. Yeah, no, I get that, man. Um, all right, so let's talk a little about you and your game. Um, you know, you just had your first year as a starter, at least for varsity. Um, you're obviously an exceptional athlete. You, I saw you return some kicks as a freshman. You, you, you know, you got called up to varsity. You did some receiving work. Uh, you had a nice, you know, some nice yardage on the ground. I even saw one clip. You like, it was like a 70 yard run or something. You like trucked some dude and, and then just kept going. So you've got some of that in your game. You got some of that in your game. So, uh, how do you describe what kind of a quarterback you are? What kind of quarterback do you want to be? I want to, so if you've watched Josh Allen play, okay, I want to be him. Like now, obviously, like you, you look at Aaron Rodgers and you look at Patty Mahomes. Like, you, like the the way, like the throws they make is insane. But Josh Allen, he's he's a football player. Like he, I I, I want to be able to run like he does. But like, if you also watch, like he could, he could be, a, he could be a pocket player as much as you want. Like that's me. Like I, I can stay in the pocket. My pocket movement has increased exceedingly, um, and just kind of like my feel for it and my escapes. But um, so I mean, yeah, like I can, I can, I can do a drop back, and I can go through a three progression read, and I can make a throw based on um, leverage. Um, but I can also run the ball. Like if, if, if the pocket collapses, I can escape and I, I can make a play with my feet as well. So that, that's me. Yeah. As a well, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great, uh, thing to, to aspire to, man. And I mean, you're, you're going to have the size, you're almost already there for crying out loud. Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, I think, I think I could see some of that, you know, I've watched, I watched some huddle. I watched, like I said, against Pulaski because I could find it on um, on YouTube. And so uh, I can see some of that. I can see some of that. Um, so the Elite 11, you came in. Um, you were on my list as one of the guys. I was like, I want to see him up close. I want to see him. I know CJ Carr in your class was there. He's obviously pretty highly rated. Um, Danny O'Neill was another guy I kind of liked. He's from like the Midwest. Um, I think he's got a nice, a nice arm. But I never wanted to see what you were all about. And I think you didn't disappoint to me, man. I mean, you um, you look good to me. Uh, crisp your throws I didn't see many off target at all uh, mm -hmm. how do you feel the event went for you what were your goals going in and do you did you meet them yeah um for me I was just like all right let's go have fun because it's the elite 11 I mean every quarterback aspires to go to the elite 11 and I was like dude just go in there have the time of your life and go ball out you know what you can do and I did I did solid I mean, there there were some throws I wish I had back. There was some um, some balls that were behind, or my first go ball was a little too short. I mean, going under center, like not many QBs like there were doing a five step rhythm or have ever done a five step rhythm go ball. You know, it was fun. I mean, I I went in there and just competed, and I was one of like the guys that just kind of had like the most energy, and so um, you know, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I noticed that a lot, actually. I noticed that you were kind of, uh, you know, a rah-rah guy. You know, you were you were running around. You were giving guys high fives when they were hitting, you know, when they were hitting their throws. You definitely seemed excited. You seemed like you were an energy guy. I said, you know, not only does this guy got, you know, he's, he's making the throws, but, like, he seems like a, a guy that people would want to be around. So first one's the rollout. So, yeah, this one you're coming around. I was, I was watching from the other side. And uh, people can get a good idea about how, how hard you're throwing that ball. I mean, um, it was pretty pretty much on target. I mean, that's not an easy throw. They were telling you to roll, I guess, opposite arm, right? Yes, sir. So, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a hard throw, man. I mean, I, I didn't – what what you have to do here, I mean, because you're, you're going on the run. And the coach actually corrected me after this rep. And he was like, no, do not – he said, "Do not stop running in the mm. game. You're gonna get clobbered." I was like, "I was like, all right, um, I can do that." But I mean, come on, like throwing cross, throwing across your body like that—it's hard because you have to get your shoulder closed. 
you have to make that weird arm angle. But I mean, mm-hmm. it's a throw you have to make. It's a throw you have to be able to make to be elite. And I mean, it's 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 fun. I love off. I love um, off platform off platform off platform throws. Um, yeah. But I mean, but that, yeah, it's it's such a good drill to do. Yeah, and that one was coming in there hot. I remember actually, I was standing there watching it next to another guy. And he was right behind that guy who, who kind of dropped the pass. And I was like, man, you almost just got clocked with a fastball <laughs> coming in. Um, so so then this next one's a deep ball. Uh, we'll take a look. I think this was, yeah, I guess this was maybe the go they were trying to get you to throw. And so, you know, you're, you're standing here and uh, we'll watch you take a little, I guess it's not, oh no, this was the one where they were bumping you. And then you had kind of a deep throw and the guy's catching in the corner there. Mm-hmm. This yeah. was about a twenty, maybe twenty-five yarder. Maybe yeah, like that's... a corner route, or was he just standing out there? I'm trying to see. It looks like it looks like the receivers on the. I think I remember this. The receivers were gassed, and so they already had them in position. To kind <laughs> yeah, of I mean it was hot, man. It was, it was yeah, it was yeah, hot so, out there. Yeah, it was. And so, yeah, what it was, it was me doing a three-step drop. And there was, they were simulating as a guy was coming on my back shoulder, and I had to move up real quick and then reset, pop, and make the D ball throw. So yeah, that was that was a fun drill. Yeah, this one's the same thing with with the bump uh, with the pad guy, and then um, but this one's a crosser, and I thought this was a really nice throw. Um, curious if you thought it was good or if you would have maybe wanted to place it slightly better, but I thought it was like on time, on target, pretty much. So you, this is you taking a drop, you're getting bumped. I think it's a pretty solid, I mean, nice uh, nice zip on that. About 15, yeah. 20 yard crosser. Yeah, so for me, yeah, yeah. That was, I, I could have put it more on his, uh, play on his front side shoulder is a little high. Okay, a little, a little, a little, a little high, you think? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, for me, for me, I mean, very rarely do I, do I be, do I go like, oh yeah, like that was perfect. Like for me, there's always like tiny little corrections I make because sure. I just I'm a perfectionist. So I mean, sure. with football, I'm a perfectionist because I want to be like the best I can. So I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean that one. I if it was just if it was foot lower, would have been good. Um, all right, the next one's I think a footwork drill, and this one was right on the money, about 20 yards into the end zone uh, after the footwork drill. And you guys had to be getting tired at this point. You had been running around. <laughs> then you were doing all these chopping. It was 95 degrees out there. I mean, you had to start. Like, do you did your leg? Like, did you feel like my legs are starting to give out? I'm I'm not. <laughs> you know, I can't quite do the same throws I'd want to do. So for me, I mean, there was multiple quarterbacks out there. I mean, I was like, there were times where we were like mid drill, and I was like, gosh, I need some water right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some other guys were saying the same thing. They're like, they're like, dang, bro, we need some water. But uh, yeah. nah. But for like for me. I, so I had new cleats on, and so I was working those in as well. But it was, it was oh, a hot gosh. day. Yes, it was yeah. a hot day. But, I mean, for me, like, my legs were getting a little tired, but they weren't going to give out. I mean, I was going to continue. Like, I, I was going to do it all day if they if they sure. made us do it. But well, you got adrenaline and stuff, too, I'm sure, pumping. For sure, for sure, for sure. And so let's take a look that, at this one, then. You can, you can walk us through. So, yeah, you had to chop through these. He was telling you, like, up, back, cross. But then it's a really nice throw there, right? I mean, the guy didn't even move. And yeah, uh, you can like see that. the zip on that. I mean, I'm not sure if you've um, – if you, you got clocked. Did they touch your ball velocity, I mean, uh, at that tent at the end? Do you um, know yes, the sir, number you got? I did. I, I don't quite know the numbers yet. It should be coming in – this weekend but uh uh uh-uh, i'm i'm uh, i'm excited to see what those numbers were <laughs> um yeah, yeah. But th- that drill was fun that uh the coach at that drill i was warming up with him before and me and him got pretty close pretty quick and so he was excited to watch me throw like in his drill and i loved it that was that was one of my favorite drills just kind of like because even for me like I, I I wanted the other quarterbacks in that drill to be better, and so when they were going through the the, the footwork, their eyes were like down. I was like, guys, get your eyes up, get your eyes up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just kind of like trying to help everyone. And so that's a hard drill to keep your eyes up because I mean you're trying to stay off the the cones, but it's also while moving your feet in the pocket. But I yeah, I like that drill. 
Yeah, man. I, I mean, I definitely noticed that you were doing, you were like, you were helping guys out. You were definitely interested in what other people are doing and not just yourself, which I think mm-hmm. is a good quality to have, especially, you know, leadership quality and, uh, you know, something that you would want in a signal caller. So, all right, that's all good stuff. Now let's get down to the juicy stuff about recruiting. So where are you in the process? Obviously, it goes without saying you have some some pretty strong ties to, you know, Wu City, um, you know, down in Fayetteville going to be a hog. But how much are you like thinking about like, is that already kind of a, you know, you're thinking done deal or are you are you wide open? What are you thinking? Completely wide open. Now, I love the coaches up at Arkansas. I was just with them. I was just with one of them um, the other day. And, um, uh, I mean, yeah, like for me, it's, it's yeah, I've got ties there. But I also understand the position I'm in. And I understand that there are many colleges that, um, that would want me to be their quarterback. And so I, I've really taken into consideration. I've told my family this. I was like, listen – I'm not going to just go to Arkansas just because all of y'all went to Arkansas. Like it's, <laughs> it's like, I'm going to go where I think I can play football. And if that ends up being Arkansas, then yeah, for sure. Let's go. But if it ends up being any other school, like, yeah, let's go. Like I, cause I just want to play football and, yeah. and I, and if, and if that's, and I guess my, my summarization of the answer is like, no, I'm not solely Arkansas. Um, yeah. That the getting an offer from there was very cool but getting an offer from everywhere else is just as cool. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like to, to understand that other colleges and other college coaches want me. Um, it's cool. It's a cool position to be in. So, I mean, yeah, like I, I'm completely open to go wherever fits best for me. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of fit, I know that, um, I, I, you know, speaking of coaches from all over the country, so a little bit far away from you, Pitt, I think has been talking to you and, um telling you uh you know are they are they saying like hey you can come be the next picket and throw for you know a, a billion yards be first round pick um or you know you're do you think you fit in their offense what are you thinking about that um you know as a school that's not arkansas for instance yeah no i was actually on the phone with uh coach signetti today um and yeah i understand that they just uh that Kenny Pickett just got drafted. By the way, one heck of a quarterback. He was a dog. And um, well, you know, if you could ever do that like half slide, that would just be the best. I mean, that that thing was so awesome. They, <laughs> you know, went viral they, or whatever. I think they ruled that uh illegal though. <laughs> they may have made changed the rule because of it. Yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. No, but um they they they're encouraging me to get up to campus and I would love to get up to campus, but I've created a good relationship with Coach DeBazio. Um, but, I mean, yeah, like, they they haven't said stuff like, oh, you could be the next Pickett because my, my my game of play and Pickett's game of play, I mean, they're, they're different. And um, – but, I mean, I do look up to Kenny Pickett in a form of, like, just kind of like the way, like, he throws. I mean, he's so accurate, and he knows where to go every time. And he's a football player. Like, you just watch him. Like, he's a player. You know what I'm saying? He's an athlete. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I – Pittsburgh is 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 a really interesting school. And, I, I mean, I – like, for me, it's too early to say, like, my top three or top five. But, I mean, Pittsburgh is, is a school that, it, I mean, I could potentially see myself going to or um, if, if it ends up being, like, the school that I end up liking best. Like, I'm – my, like what I'm trying to say is like I'm open to going even to Pittsburgh. Sure, yeah, out of the southeast, but you do have I think already some other SEC schools. Um, you know, you you got a lot of people coming after you already. So what are you looking in your college choice fit? I mean, what's most important to you? Is it uh, you know an offense that's going to cater to kind of that dual threat ability and highlight your running, or you know what other things are you looking for? Yeah, for me, big part of this uh, process is seeing a school's culture, um, understanding like how how everything is ran, um, and the attitude of the players. Like, if the attitude of the players is like, "Oh, I don't really want to be here today. Like, I'd rather 
be chilling. Like, no, like if you're at a, if you're on a college team, you better show up ready to work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And that's going to be my energy every day. Um, and if you like, if you were like a coach, let's say you were my coach, you'd understand that I'm being truthful of that. But, um, for me, like, because I've under I understand, um, differences of culture this year, this football team, like this year, it, like our culture is unlike any others. Like we love each other. We love everyone. We have a saying called Leo love everyone. Um, and, uh, I mean it, this culture on this football team, it's, it's great. And I, I love the, I love my, this team and, um, all the guys that I'm going to be playing with this season. I know I can take to war. So, I, I mean, that's definitely one thing I can, I look for. Another thing is, um, kind of like who, who else is like committed in the class? Um, do they already have a quarterback commit? Um, another thing I would be looking for is like, who, who am I, what coaches am I going to be spending my time around? Um, like just kind of getting to create that coaching relationship with my position coach and with the, with the staff and with the trainers, like, like, like who am I going to be spending my time around every day? And so those are kind of like the main things that I look for. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to look at the facilities. I'm not going to look at the stadium because at the end of the day, like 80,000 or 40,000 fans, like I just want to play football. Yeah. Well, I think this is a great point about, you know, the coaches are going to spend all the day, every day with, I mean, you're, no one's really spending all day with a head coach. So right. it's who, who are those people that are going to be pouring into you every day and, and getting the relationship with them. So, mm-hmm. all right. So like the last question pretty much is, is um, are you looking into like graduating early and rolling early? And, and what is that? You know, you're just going into your junior year. So that might be something you think about. You have a family who's all, you have know, done this whole thing before. So in your case, is that something y'all have talked about? And is that something that coaches are already being like, you know, especially for quarterbacks, we want to get you on campus, we want to get you in the spring game, et cetera? Yeah, no. Um, I am in position to enroll early um, at my school. I've gotten with my guidance counselor, and we've set up my schedule to where I can graduate early if I ever want to. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know if I will or not. It just depends on what the college coaches are wanting out of me in my senior year. But um, I'm going to go ahead and be school-wise in position to graduate early. But if um, if I end up not wanting to, then I'll just stick with my uh, friends the rest of my high just school. Just have homeroom for the second half of your senior year every, yeah. every, every yeah. period. <laughs> yeah, no joke. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I've gotten my principal, and uh, I, I will be in position to graduate early if I end up coming to that position, I don't know if I will or not, but sure. I will be ready to, if I, if I am. Is that something that coaches are kind of already mentioning <laughs> though? Is that like, are they, is that on their radar too? Is that, a, do you think that's a factor for them in terms of um, picking guys who will be in that position versus not? Yeah. I mean, a couple coaches, I mean, like it's rare for me to hear that at this point. Like okay. I, I think, I think two people have, have mentioned it to me. Um, but not it, not in this form of like, and if you commit, like we'll want you early, but it'll, it's more like, Hey, like if you end up committing and we end up wanting you early, then you should probably go ahead and be positioned in that position to do that. And I like, all right, yeah, that makes sense. But, uh, I mean, other than that, it's not, it's not a regular topic of conversation. Sure. Well, and maybe it's early, but, um, it's, it's always interesting, you know, for us, when we're, when we're kind of looking to which freshmen are going to make an immediate impact, one of the things we do is who's enrolling early and who do we get a, mm-hmm. a glimpse of in that spring game, you know, mm-hmm. before their, what would be their freshman year um, kind of gives a glimpse into, you know, if a freshman can come on campus and make any noise in that spring game, it's like wheels up. I mean, it's like from our perspective, from the fantasy world, like freshmen or freshman receivers, freshman running back that are, taking, you know, snaps away from upperclassmen immediately, it's like, whoa, okay, they must be really making their mark. So, yeah, uh, it's something, something that's interesting to us. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I got for you, man. I, I really appreciate the time. I know you're super busy, but, um, you know, good luck going into junior year. I hope you guys beat Pulaski. Uh, I'll be, root, I'll be <laughs> rooting too. for LRCA. 
uh, for sure. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll have you back as you go through the process. That'd be great. Yes, sir. hundred percent. Thank you for having me so much. This is I've never done something like this. So it was cool. All right, man. Well, we'll, we'll talk to you later and everybody, this has been the official. Thank <laughs> you.